what's going on everybody i appreciate y'all tuning the channel today with us here at 323 fabrication out here on this beautiful morning enjoying this fresh air just relaxing enjoying this wonderful world that we've been blessed with but if you're new to the channel i appreciate you subscribing and you know go back check it out man we got all kinds of stuff on the channel crusty old cars and trucks and barn finds and whatnot but this video we are working on ls swapping our chevy 2 gasser for power tour 2023 it is almost the end of may so we're running out of time in a hurry but in this video we're going to tackle getting an awesome mazir water pump installed and modifying some fittings for that and then working on wiring up our holly terminator x so i hope y'all enjoy it got a little rain it's cooled off a little bit thankfully uh still haven't done anything else on the car other than changing the lockout solenoid thing but hannah showed up with this high dollar piece of hardware appreciate garrett at lashley rods and customs for ordering this for me so far let's see. oh man let me put it on this other table all right here we go got some constructions so that's good that's more than i can say for some of the stuff that showed up lately oh man this thing is fancy looking we got bolts we got a harness pigtail got some brand new gaskets <clears throat> got wow this thing's actually pretty light <laughs> oh man this thing is awesome <laughs> there you go so this thing's got two ports for let's see here where you can run your heater off there and there and then behind this one, you can put in a thermostat. And that's the reason we bought this one. All right, y'all. I'm under the Chevy 2. Uh, this is the engine and transmission harness off that 01 WS6 Trans Am. I've been saving it in case I ever LS swap something with a six-speed. But instead, I bought a Holly for this car. So uh, there's our reverse light plug off the harness plugged in. Which is what we needed. So we got that one. We get it unplugged. All right, that's what that looks like. Let me see here. There you go. And then, sorry, I have my flashlight in my mouth. There's our other one. And then that green and purple wire right there. This is the other side of the harness where it ran down the opposite side of the transmission. And there's our speedometer. That's what we needed. So I'm gonna mark them both in the harness with a piece of tape in case I ever do decide to use this for something, which I probably won't. But oh, we've sold a lot of parts and stole a lot of parts off at Trans Am, so it's more than paid for itself. So I'm gonna cut $20 worth of pigtails off of this harness instead of buying them. $25 or whatever they are. There you go. Between the fan and the rain, you wouldn't be able to hear anything in here. But uh, I put this side of the harness back together, got it all wire loomed and run the way I want. Got our cam sensor, run down, knock sensor, coil packs plugged in, runs back this way and goes up. O2 harness is hanging because we don't have the exhaust on yet. I'm going to put the O2 in the exhaust and not the header because I'll have more clearance. Um, Map sensor's plugged in. It'll go in the back of the intake, obviously. Only other thing left, we're waiting on our extension for our oral pressure sending unit right there. These are for the injectors. I ordered some more wire loom. We've got some this kind, but uh, you got to split it. and It's designed to be run before you put the ends on, and I don't want to do that. So this is the split kind, so I ordered another pack of that for this piece. That's all that's left. It's got to be fixed. Just got to put some from there down to there and then the holly harness will be back the way it needs to be 
We wired this up, got a coolant sensor in the harness, uh, coal packs plugged in, knock sensor, starter, I mean, a uh, crank sensor plugged in, starters wired up, hot uh, from the battery and everything else, got the alternator wired up. So we have made a little bit of progress. And then of course, we got our big fancy electric water pump on, which has this new problem. Doop, doop, doop. So, gotta address that. Worst case scenario, I'll just uh, cut some of this off and turn it, put a pie cut in there, weld it back on, and then it'll turn and then come down to the radiator over here. But it'll be one of those deals when we get it all put together and get the core support and the radiator back on the car. I'll address that then because the top hose isn't going to work either. I went and got the hoses up, down from upstairs. It'll be one of those deals where I'll kind of bend a piece of TIG wire the way I want it and then go to the parts store. O'Reilly's always been real good to me about letting me go in the back and go through their hoses until I find what I want. Or buy 10 of them and then bring them and test them and then take the rest of them back. But uh, anyway, that's the progress we've made today. We get these pigtails off and that way we can wire the trans stuff up tomorrow, which will be awesome. And... I think that's all we got. You got anything? Yeah. What you got? You might explain that you had to move your alternator because of your steering box. That's why it's in the way on this side. Oh yeah. You know, we ordered another ICT billet. This is the second alternator bracket we've ordered because I wanted to put the alternator over here and then of course this was in the way. So we had to move it to this side. So that's our second alternator bracket. Um, obviously, we're not, we have the water pump. We're not, we can't change that. So hopefully we can just route it around it. But that is why the alternator's down there. Uh, ICT Billet does sell another alternator bracket that puts it out here when you run an electric pump. And it wouldn't have been in the way, but the me according to the measurements, it this bar would have been in the way. So we didn't do that. Plus I wanted it down low. I'm trying to keep the motor as clean as possible um you know so it doesn't look as bad as it would if we just stuck a normal ls in this old school car check it out y'all this is the dip stick we ordered it came in finally it says 99 and later with thorley headers i i read a few different ones about needing a longer one and all that and then i read about this one and i was like well i got headers so it's the one i ordered um you can't bring it straight up out of the dipstick hole and use either one of these holes. The bolt brackets way up here by the valve cover. It would probably have worked in that one, but then it was close to the headers. So we, we used this rear bolt hole. I had to drill the bracket out on the dipstick just a little bit. Uh, the head on that bolt's a 15 millimeter. And we've got plenty of clearance. And then I had to take the shield off the starter and trim it so that it clears, but it's not touching, it won't rub, and it's in the block, bottomed out. So, dipstick works good, it looks like it reads pretty well. It's a nice piece. And it should be, because it was $100. So that's what we're working on, got our belt in today. Got some more wire loom insul uh, split plate braided wrap, so we'll wrap this and keep plugging along the uh the belt's not super tight on it right now but you can see watch the alternator move i don't know if y'all can tell but it does it moves which i mean that is aluminum so i guess it's got some flex in it but we'll tighten it up best we can and hopefully it'll survive man i just love that intake so we got the wiring harness routed under the intake manifold these two come out and plug in there. Coolant temp comes out the front and goes under the water pump. Now, had this not had a common ground with the rest of the harness and I didn't want to avoid my warranty by cutting it, I'd have added a ground to it and run it down the bottom side where this cam sensor comes from and run it up to here so you wouldn't see it as much. But that's okay. It does look all right. IAT sensor is going to be under the elbow right here. But I've got to get the right size bung and all that's gonna matter later on. We're not worried about that right now, but it reaches, 
these two reach there's a fuel pressure sensor but it's hid down in there uh, i'm just going to zip tie it because i don't need it right now um, but other than that it, it fits good the only thing left uh the map sensor i had was a truck map and it won't fit in the back of the intake and i tried to cut it and make it fit and i ended up breaking it so instead of breaking another one even though it, i don't need them i'm just gonna order the right ls1 sensor uh buddy tom said he's got an ls3 don't know if it'll fit the intake but we'll see other than that i mean we're making a little bit of progress i'm gonna gotta keep working on the wire and i gotta get the ecu mounted and all that inside so that's probably what i'll do next but i figured y'all wanted to see the intake on there because that thing is just absolutely killer <laughs> I'm gonna show you a little bit of what we've gotten done working on figuring out a gas pedal the factory one isn't gonna work for a cable this is one out of the parts car the carousel red factory maroon 69 GTO that's outside dad's cleaned it up and painted it for me um, this is our factory pedal without the linkage just the pedal that mounts to the floor so working on that I'm gonna show you a little bit of the wire and it is an absolute mess right now uh, but the Holly's installed, run, routed, uh, everything should be okay. I put these spacers in to try to tilt these LEDs down because they're pretty, they're pretty rough at night. Um, but everything's hooked up for the most part. What plugs in here is the line lock button that's on the shifter, which the shifter's taken out. This is the easiest way to fill these late model transmissions is through the shifter location. I learned that with my third gen Camaro in high school uh, and you just pour it right down in there it's easier especially with this because you don't have a whole console you got to remove you can just unbolt it and pull the shifter through the hole and dump it in it's so much easier than trying to fill it through the side of the transmission what I'm gonna run in this t56 is sinker mesh uh, I got Valvoline because they didn't have they only had one quart of royal purple and the dealership, I buy it at the Chevrolet dealer too. They were closed the day I got it. So I went with Valvoline. I do run their motor oil. I like their stuff. So we're gonna run Valvoline synchro mesh in this. Synchro mesh seems to do better than regular ATF, which is what these transmissions call for. Easier to deal with, but this makes filling it a breeze. You ain't gotta get under there and try and pump it in the side of the trans. Just pour it in the top. And then you can turn the bottle upside down and it'll finish draining. It's a lot easier. I have filled many of them through the side of the trans and it is a pain. So we got that going on. Uh, like I said, most of the Holly wiring is actually finished. The only thing not done is connecting it to the battery and I'm not going to do that until I'm ready for power. Uh, and of course, I'm not done wiring what I gotta do you know these are extra inputs and outputs I'm not using so I'll get them tied up out of the way this is the slack for the screen and once we get it happy and running and everything else then I'll zip tie this up out of the way we do have a phone charger 12 volt cigarette lighter and two USB plugs and then I mounted this so that I'd be able to see the indicators on the ECU and it's mounted on rubber isolators uh, and then all this is a mess from when we wired the car the first time I never finished it I just kind of got it running and started driving it which is evident by a lot of loose stuff we've been finding um, but it's all good it's a bright indicator so you know when your brights are on this is line lock indicator so when you push this button this lights up to know that the solenoids uh, powered and then when you click the button this activates to know let you know that it's actually active I don't know just little stuff like that I like to do um, and I got a sticker to put here with the shift pattern that way you know because I'm not running the knob that's got the pattern on it I'm running the one with the button but I, I printed out a little label that'll have the shift pattern I'll stick right there for reference and then I'll probably print a label stick up here for the sequence of cranking the car um, dome light these are billet automotive buttons they're laser engraved i really like them i just wish i had gotten there was a way to dim them and i i, I look because i haven't actually looked at the directions that came with them i haven't dug them out yet to see if there's a way to dim them but i tried to aim them down a little because they were 
directly in your eyeballs while you're trying to drive at night. And then I got, once the car is running, I'll get back under the dash and I will wire loom and zip tie and clean up this entire mess that's under here. And that should be good. Should be sufficient. So that's what we got going on. Get the trans filled up, get the shifter back on it. I need to cut the zip tie so I can stick it in gear and adjust the stops on it so we don't overshift it. That's really important. They say T56s have internal stops, but the shift forks flex. So, and a, a shifter with external stops to me is just cheap insurance. You know, it's, it's worth doing. I've got an MGW shifter upstairs that Tom sold me with the transmission, but I prefer my Hurst because of the external stops. So I'm gonna do that. I'll put a little bead of silicone around the top of the trans before I slap it on there. And we'll torque her down and adjust our stops I got uh, that one more quart I think it holds like 3.5 or 3.8 I'll have to google it in just a minute but I bought four quarts so we're good this flexes this ICT billet mount I gotta address that I'm gonna try to brace that up uh, I got if I hadn't cut the factory water pump harness out of it or not the factory but the one that was on it from uh, the small block Chevrolet I wouldn't have had to rewire any of that. The harness that was on it plugged right into the water pump, so it's all routed and clean. Got all our wiring done, cleaned up, zip tied. Everything is pretty well ready to go. This is our uh, injector harness plug and our map sensor plug, which are not, I'm waiting on that to come in. Obviously injectors don't go on until the intake's on. And then the O2 sensor plug on the bottom is not plugged in, but it's zip tied in place. These are all routed where they'll go under the intake. These two plug right into the throttle body. This will plug into the elbow for the mat sensor, IAT sensor. Uh, other than that, it's pretty well cleaned up. Uh, we're gonna use three factory plug wires and then make uh, five more. I mean, that's kind of where we're at, guys. We're making some progress. I haven't been filming a lot of it because a lot of the laying under the dash for... That's why the seat's back out of it. My neck was killing me because I've been laying on the floor of the car under the dash wiring. Um, but it's turned out really well. I mounted everything. Let me go over there. Let me go over there and show you. So, wires for the battery. And then, um, those have to go on. But... The reason, this is just the can plug to go into my computer. But I mounted all of this under here along with a smaller fuse block to get hot off of for like the cigarette lighter and whatever accessories we want to add. Um, but I mounted all this under here to number one, get it out of the way and keep it cleaner but because everything before was mounted in the glove box and it was useless there was so much msd stuff in here but i also had a center console i'm not going to have a center console now with the bench seat so i needed somewhere to put stuff so now we have this and i'll put a little tray or something in there we'll figure something out but it's definitely turning out better than it was before pretty pretty excited y'all I'm, so, I'm looking forward to power tour i really am it's gonna be awesome all right in true American fashion, more, right? So, internet says 3.75. I saw a bunch of people saying put a full case in it. So, what am I going to do with a, quart, a quarter of a quart of synchro mesh? Nothing. So, I'm going to pour it all in here. We're going to put a whole four quarts in it. And then I'll get the shifter adjusted and put back on. And then I gotta build some cup holders to come off the side of this. And pretty much be jammed up then, I do believe. All right, this is gonna be hard to show y'all. I'm gonna try. So, what you got, it's in fourth right now. You can see that slight gap right there and it'll flex into it, but it's in gear. So if you overshift it, you can only overshift it that much. Same thing for third. And notice what that does, you adjust those. It's got an Allen head, Allen wrench. 
uh, the all thread is got an Allen head in the end of it, and then you 11 sixteenths jam nut. And you just turn it where you want it, and then hold it and jam it tight. Good to go. All right, I got some inch and a half aluminum chucked up in this Rapid 3D USA pie cut jig on my Ellis bandsaw. I have to modify the water inlet to turn and go this way. So I'm gonna cut some pies and probably rip it off right there and then turn it and go tack it together and make sure that it'll actually thread in the thing because I don't want it. It's, it's kind of tight to the body, but we'll see. We'll see what we got. Uh, but that's the plan, so I'm gonna Go ahead and cut this off, and then the next one will be an actual pie. This one's just going to be a pie on one side. it up to get it out nope it came out so that's what you get you get a uh that's warm cuts a i think this is 30 degrees on each side it might be 15 i think it's 30 though so anyway i'm gonna cut probably two more at least see what we end up with and then go eyeball it with the car and then cut that This is what I've come up with. It's hard to show y'all, but it should clear the alternator. Um, there's, I'm gonna space this just a little bit when I weld it, and then I'm gonna take an end motor and grind the inside down. Uh, and then same thing with the outside one, and then weld the outside. And It's a little smaller, but this actually necks down right in here to almost the same ID as this. And then this other end is just a little bit bigger than the idea of this. I don't think it's really gonna matter enough to matter, make a difference, but uh, I'm gonna, you know, grind it down and clean it up. I'll get it all tacked together and then I'll weld this one and knock these off and burr the inside. And... But that should solve our problem for our water pump situation where it feeds right into the alternator bracket assembly. We'll get that knocked out on Monday right after I throw it on the ground. All right, y'all. This is my design here. Yes, it does neck down just a hair, but it's not much, and I'll clean up the transitions inside of it. But that's what it's gotta do uh, to get over the alternator. Should be fine. We gotta pull the pump off to thread it in, though, because where it's at, it, it hits the block and the timing cover and everything but it will clear right here on the pump, so we should be good. That should be our solution. prettiest but it should hold water now yeah it is ugly on the inside 
but you know what i'm going to fix that we'll smooth it all out get an end grinder and all that and then lube up the o-ring put it back on thread it back in the pump put the pump back on cleaned up a little bit more should flow just fine there it is it does turn a hair forward i didn't get it 100 percent lined up directly 90 but it's gonna do just what we need it to and it'll go over the alternator come down to the i want to say it's it's probably about there it's about the same ain't it because the core supports here and then the radiator's up above that so it's it's probably pretty well in line with the lower radiator hose and so what we'll do next thing i'm gonna do is fix this alternator bracket try to brace it up some and then after that we can put the core support back on it and the radiator and then we'll be able to see i'll bend some aluminum tig wire in the design of the line i need and then same thing for the top and go to the parts store and look through a bunch of lines i think this one's inch and three quarter and that one's inch and a half or vice versa something like that and we're not running a thermostat uh probably won't for a while anyway at least till it cools off because everything i've watched on youtube and seen about power tour everybody says you want to make sure you got a good cooling system so got a big old radiator no inner fenders uh like i said last time with a small electric water pump a lot smaller than that one it was like a i want to say 35 gallons an hour or something this is a 55 but uh, i had a hard time keeping temp in the car before so we should not have a problem with that well i hope you all enjoyed the video hope you learned a little bit of stuff we've uh we've been steady working trying to make progress trying to make this event we're running out of time in a hurry but we're gonna make it i know we are i got faith so if you were new to the channel and you enjoyed this video i'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe tell your friends about it throw it a thumbs up if you liked it and y'all just remember like david freiberger said don't get it right just get it running so get out there and drive your old junk and enjoy it i appreciate it y'all be blessed